just be in his presence. And I want to invite you to do the same as we, you know, obviously transition into, into the word. And, 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 uh, but I, but I, may, I may pause in a minute and, and, just, and just take a moment to just be in the presence of our God. And so I am, I, uh, Jesus. Silence can be offered. Stop, Lord. You never stop. And so I, uh, I am excited uh, to be to be up on up here and, and on this on this um, on this platform. This is new. In fact, I'm the first one to preach on it on this part. Yeah. And so you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that it, it, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. So either way, I'm first. It it's really works out in my favor. <laughs> either way. And so um, you know, I wanna I wanna we're gonna talk about presence tonight and. Uh, and God's presence, and 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 what what Jesus did to restore that presence, uh, and so we're gonna we're gonna be uh, uh, in John 14, and so if you have a if you have a Bible, you can follow along. Um, it may or may not be on the wall on the on the projector. So um, Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you for your word. Jesus, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your spirit, Lord. I pray that they would collaborate in here tonight. Jesus, you are the highest authority in our lives. You are the highest authority in our lives. God, God, we desire to have a, a pure heart before you, Lord. We, Holy Spirit, we want to cooperate with you in every area of our lives. And so, 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 Father, whatever, whatever I say or don't say, Lord, I pray that, Lord, your word never fails. Your, your word never returns void. And so, Father, I just pray that, that I could just, just get out of the way and, and just let you do what it is that you're going to do and just, just share what you've given me, Lord. Jesus name so uh, and I, I want to I want to uh, just preface this um, really quick and so John 1030 says that I and my father are one okay I and my father are one and so this is a probably a familiar passage of scripture uh, for us uh, uh, hopefully, hopefully the Gospel of John is a familiar passage of Scripture for us because it's just it's so good. And um, and I have um, I have been off and on camped out in, in in John for for a while for over a year. And and in John fourteen one uh, verses one through four, I'm gonna I'm gonna read that. Uh, it says, "Let not Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God." Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions or many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know. And the way you know. And so I want to I want to talk about just this first statement that Jesus makes. He says, he says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And so we really see we see a picture of Jesus contrasting himself to the father. Okay? And, and, and in fact, in the Gospel of John, you see that a lot where Jesus references himself in comparison to the father. And he makes a lot of he makes lots of statements in there of, of I and my Father are one, um, and so we see it. We see Jesus can, can contrasting himself to, to, to God the Father, and um, you know he does it. He does it in John eight, and we're not going to go there, but I'm just going to just going to mention it quickly. In John eight, he makes these I am statements uh, throughout there, and 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 you need we, we need to understand that at the time um, Jerusalem was in an uproar. Um, 
uh, here comes Jesus comes on the scene and he's doing all this crazy stuff. He's doing all kinds of miracles. He's healing the sick. He's raising the dead. He's casting out demons. These and 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 and, and so he's doing all this crazy stuff, right? All this cool stuff, and and um, and he's talking about drinking blood and and eating his flesh. And these first century people are probably like, we have heard it all now. Um, and so Jesus's comment, uh, you know, it was, it was, it, Jesus's comment sounded potentially blasphemous when he, when he compared himself to the father, right? For, for, for Jewish culture, that was, that was, that was not something that you said. In fact, we, we, we see all throughout uh, the gospels where the Pharisees, they really kind of, they really twist them up. And so this is an interesting statement that Jesus makes. And, 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 it, and, and he says, let not your heart be troubled. Well, the very idea that he said, let not your heart be troubled, uh, and then compares himself to the father, probably caused more unrest in them than was already going on. And so uh, I love this because Jesus makes this crazy statement, and then he backs it up with a promise. Um, he, he says, I'm going to go and prepare a place and I'm going to come back, and I'm going to receive you to myself. That way you can be where I'm at, okay? And and, 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 and this is why. This is why Jesus makes a promise, because his word never returns void. His word never returns void. And, and he, even if I mess something up or I preach something accidentally in error, it really doesn't matter because his word never returns void. And so I'm just going to go for it. And so, um, you know, I, uh, I, I, I sh I'm fixing to share an idea with you uh, that, that I really feel like the Lord spoke with me uh, a little over a year ago. And I, and I actually shared it with, with one of my professors in school, and he really didn't like it. <laughs> but it's okay because I have some academic sources to back up what I'm about to say. And so um, it's why it's really important that we have the Holy Spirit because he's really the most important person on earth. Um, and so Jesus says, in my father's house are many mansions or many rooms and that he is going to prepare a place, right? He, he just, he, he's going to go prepare a place for us, right? And so I, I don't know about you, but in my room in heaven, I, I'm going to have a, a, a skate park and I'm going to never break a bone. Uh, I'm going to jump downstairs and, and, and rails, and I'm just never going to break anything, and I'm just going to keep on gliding, and, and that's part of what my room's going to look like. You know what I mean? I'm going to have fish. I'm going to have a big fishing pond, and there's going to be all kind of big fish in it, and I'm going to catch them, and it's, and it's going to be great. Uh, I'm going to have like a gold barber chair with gold clippers, and I'm going to give out like kingdom fades, and, and like you're going to see like the crystal glass sea like shining off the side of their head after they get a haircut. And, and so this is, this is part of what my room is going to look like in heaven. I'm speaking English, and so uh, and and so I might speak a little slang too, and it's okay. You can you you'll, you'll catch up. Um, and so and listen, I love lightning storms. I am fascinated by lightning storms, and so I'm going to get to watch all the lightning storms around the entire world, all at the same time, right? And this this is this is what I picture my room being like. But how many how many have thought that? How many have have read this passage of scripture? and thought, hey, listen, Jesus is talking about that he's going to go and prepare a place for me, and that when he comes back, uh, that place is going to be a place that he's prepared in heaven for me after I die. Right? Come on. I, I, come on. We, we, we thought that. And it's not, it's, not a hard, it's not a hard thought to think. It's not a hard idea to come across. Right? And so um, this... I, I, I just, but this is what I felt like the Lord shared me. He says, Nikki, you are the room. You are the mansion. In my father's house are many rooms or many mansions. And this room pre prepared for me in heaven on earth is not after I die. It's before I die. Because, 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 because you realize Jesus hasn't gone to the cross yet, right? He hasn't gone to the cross yet. But the cross is where he's going to go and prepare that place. So that when he comes back and receives us to himself, I'm getting ahead of myself, but it's okay. It's, it's actually when he returns after his resurrection and brings the Holy Spirit. And so um, who goes, who, and, so, and so we're going to back up a little bit. Who goes to prepare a place only to come back and receive someone to themselves, right? 
a bridegroom does. Right. A bridegroom goes and prepares a place for what? For the bride. So that the, when the bridegroom comes back, he receives the bride to himself. And there and there and there they have a place where, where they're together, right? And so and, and so what are they what are they what kind of place has he prepared? It's a it's a dwelling place, right? And 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 what do you do in a dwelling place? You dwell. And 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 dwell in what, you say? Well, you dwell in each other's presence. Okay. And so Jesus is he is going to he is gonna he is going to the cross. He 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 knows that he's going to the cross, and he knows. He, he knows what his mission is because, because he and the Father are one. And he is going to go and prepare a place and come back and receive us to himself so that where he is, we can be there with him. Okay? And that we can be in each other's presence. And so I am convinced that Jesus is, is talking about many mansions and many rooms as people. That's us. That's you and me. That's those of us who are in Christ. And, and so uh, he's going to prepare a dwelling place so that we can house and room the presence of God after he goes and prepares that place. And we, we see this language over and over throughout John. It, and, and, and so like, in, 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 for instance, in John 14, 20, it's not going to be up there. I'm just going to read it real quick. It says, it says, all that at that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you, okay? And, and we, see this, we see this language all throughout the Gospel of John. And, and so in order for this place to be prepared, he has to go to the cross. The, the, the place can't be prepared without the cross, without the resurrection, without the Holy Spirit, okay? And so, and so Jesus is not talking for a, about a prepared place after his coming, his second coming. He is talking about a prepared place after his resurrection when he sends the Holy Spirit. And this isn't, you know, this isn't just some descriptive, you know, figurative language that, 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 he's, that he's using. He is talking about a literal transaction that's going to take place. And so, so, that, so that you and I and us and we can dwell and house the presence of the Lord. pausing because I'm, I'm trying to catch up and you guys are family and so I'm really not worried about it and so um, and so I, I'm just gonna I know I've probably reiterated and recapped it probably seven or nine times but at least I haven't said listen I don't think once <laughs> last time last time I um uh, I, I preached a sermon at the farm and <clears throat> I don't know how many times I said listen but I kept saying listen and it kind of became a joke and it was really funny and it's not funny now, obviously. <laughs> that was mildly humor, humorous. And so, and so this is, listen, this is really interesting. This is really interesting, right? So, did I say it? Yes! Check for Jesus. All right. And so let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. I'm going to go and prepare a place for you. And when I come back, I'm going to receive you to myself so that you and I, we can hang out together. We can dwell together. We can be housed together. Okay. And so this is really interesting. I find this really interesting. In verse 5, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. And how can we know the way? Excuse me, let me back up. Verse 4, and where I go, you know, and the way you know. And Thomas says, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? And so I find this fascinating that Thomas would ask this question because Jesus was showing his disciples where he was going all the time, all the time. Like Jesus constantly snuck, would sneak off to pray and to go be in the presence of the Father. And you think they never caught him? Surely, sure. I mean, yeah, there were times where they didn't know where he was at. But, but if, 
But if you read throughout the Gospels, you'll see, you'll see instances where his disciples caught him praying and seeking the Father. And so when Thomas asked him this question, he's like, we, Lord, how do we know where you're going? We don't, we don't know the way. And, it, and, 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 if, and, if, if, and if you look at this carefully, you'll see that, that Jesus actually showed them where, he, where the way was all the time. And then he backs it up with a statement, verse 6, he says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. And, and so Jesus is constantly showing them the way to the Father. And he was showing them this place that he was going to prepare. And this, this, this place is, is a, it's really, it's really the restoration of the same presence that man had in the garden before the fall. Because that's what Jesus was going to restore. Listen, I know that Jesus went to the cross to pay for our sins. I know that Jesus went to the cross so that, so that if we could come into him, that we would not spend eternity in hell. And I love that. And we need that. And, 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 I, and I'm, I'm about that. Like, like Jesus died for you to keep your butt out of hell. Like, period. But he also went to restore presence. He also went to restore the dwelling place. Because if you read in Genesis, we know that there was no, there was no hindrance. There was no veil. There was no barricade between God and man. He had full and total access to God. And the idea that Jesus is going to the cross to prepare a place is, 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 is a place so that God and man can dwell together forever without any hindrance. And so that we can actually house the, the, the we, you realize that God, God has housed himself inside of us. If you're in Christ, God has housed himself inside of us. And, and, and we literally contain a dwelling place for the creator of the universe. The kingdom of God literally lives inside of us. It's not just some, it's not just some spiritual figurative thing. Like, he's housed himself inside of us. Okay. Problem is, is we don't believe it. Because if we believed it, we would experience it. And I'm not saying that we don't agree with it. Because we agree with it here. We agree with it intellectually. We read the word of God and it makes sense to us, right? It, like like we, we read the page, it's like, yeah, I get that. It makes, it makes sense. But, but, but we don't experience that because we don't actually believe it because we're not committing to the thinking that, hey, wait a minute, God is housed inside of me. Like, like I'm not striving for his presence anymore. Like Jesus went and prepared a place and he came back and he received me to himself. And, 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 and we're there together. The Holy Spirit lives inside of me. And so... I, um, you know, speaking of the garden, I, I, um, I really think that we see a, 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 an amazing picture in John 14 uh, being played out on the night of Jesus' betrayal. He says, and where I go, you know, and the way you, and, and the way you know. Um, like, like a second ago when I was talking about, you know, how Thomas was asking him, we don't know the way. Um, and, 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 and then. And, and on the night that Jesus portrayed, we see a picture of that very thing where Jesus is showing them the way. He is showing them exactly where he's going. And he's not only showing them where he's going, he's showing them how to get there. And so we're going we're gonna to turn to Mark chapter 14. And, and starting in, in verse 32. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it for context. Um, in verse 32, it says, Then they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And he said, Sit here while I pray. And so um, scholars say that, that, that Jesus and his disciples arrived like around 10 or 11 o'clock at night um, into the garden, some, somewhere around there. And so, and so it, it, it's... It's not like super important, but it's kind of important for us to know that in this culture at the time, um, 10 or 11 o'clock was late for the culture. Um, however, with the exception of Passover night, uh, which it was Passover night, and because what they would do is they would, they would sit around and stay up late and kick it, there's my English, and kick it, and talk about God's blessing and favor in their lives. They would actually stay up later on Passover night. And so... Um, Verse 33 and 34, it says, it says, and he took Peter, James, and John with him, and he began 
to be troubled and deeply distressed. And then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. Stay here and watch. And I, and I, really, I, re, I really see a picture in, in, in verses 33 and 34 of, of Jesus really displaying the, some of the Beatitudes that he talked about. And, 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 and for instance, in Matthew 5, 1, Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall see the kingdom, or for the kingdom is, is theirs. Um, and, he, and, he, and, in, and in verse 8, he says, um, he says uh, blessed are those who have a pure heart, for they shall see God. And, and in case you didn't know, he's fixing to see God, because he's fixing to go to the cross, and he's fixing to die, and he is fixing to see daddy. And so, um, but Jesus says, watch. He says, sit here, stay here, and watch. Well, watch what? And, and I've, often, I've often read this, and I thought, well, you know, we, you know that, that he's telling them to, to look out for the temple guards. He's telling, because, because he knows that his betrayer is coming. Okay? And, in, and, in, and in verse 35, he went a little further, and he fell on the ground, and he prayed that if it were possible, that the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will. But, but what you will. And, and I, really, I really believe that what Jesus was asking the Father was, he was saying, Father, if there's, if there's any other way, if there's any way to restore presence, if there's any way to restore identity, if there's any way to, 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 to restore man back to the way it was in the garden, other than going to this cross, Father, let it happen, Lord. You can do all things, but not what I will, what you will. And so, Father, if this is the only way that we can restore a place so that, so that, so that your people can have a dwelling place and, and, and literally have presence with you without any hindrance, then God, so be it. Because, because, because Father, I desire to be obedient to you, and I desire, I desire for us to, 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 to be one. And, 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 for, and, for, and for us to go and receive our people to ourselves so that we can have a dwelling place with them, so that they can dwell with us, and so that, and so that identity is restored. Because, because we realize, listen, but before, before Adam sinned, like, there was no hindrance. Like, we, like, man had total access to God, and man has been waiting years for this, and finally Jesus comes, and, 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 and he's going to prepare that place. And I believe that this is what Jesus, we see a picture of what he is so distressed about. Uh, because listen, he was a man. He, he was a man in the flesh. Jesus, yeah, we're not going to go to the half God, half man thing, but Jesus was a man who walked in the flesh and who was tempted in every way that you and I are, yet without sin. And, 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 and you think he wanted to go to the cross? No, he didn't want to go to the cross, but he wanted to be obedient to the Father. And he, he wanted presence restored. He wanted identity restored. But I don't think he wanted to go to the cross. And, and, but, but, but Jesus had a pure heart before God, and he desired to see the Father. And he didn't do anything without the Father doing it. He didn't say anything without the Father doing it. And so he tells his disciples to watch. And after, after he prayed to God, then he came and he found them sleeping. And he said, to, he said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not watch for one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And, and so he says this several times throughout these, these couple of verses. He, he tells them to sit here and watch. Well, I am convinced that he is not talking about the guards coming to get him. Listen, he already gave Judas the piece of bread. He already dipped the piece of bread and gave it to Judas. He knew that these folks were coming after him. He knew that he was going to the cross. He knew that his betrayer was coming. He was, listen, this is what he was telling. This is really what I believe that he was telling his disciples. He's saying, listen, I have a couple of moments, a couple of minutes, maybe an hour, maybe two left here on planet Earth to go and show you what it looks like to have presence with the Father before I die. And so you need to watch me. I don't care about the guards coming. I know they're coming. 
I, I know my father's business and I'm going to carry it out, even though I wish there was another way. But you, you need to watch me because I've got a few minutes left to show you what it looks like to have presence and to have intimacy with the father because I'm leaving. I'm going to go. I'm going to prepare a place for you and I'm going to come back and receive you to myself so that where I am, you can be there also. And when I send the Holy Spirit, you need to know what it looks like to go and get with the father. And he's saying, watch me. Watch me have intimacy with the Father. Watch me dwell with the Father. Watch how I, watch how I am intimate with Daddy and, and, and how his presence is housed here. You need to know, a, you need to have a picture of what this looks like because temptation is coming. I probably got too many notes here, but it's okay. And so I am. Um, I don't, I don't think that, uh, I don't think that Peter was just sleeping because he was tired. Now, obviously he was tired. I mean, he, he's been following Jesus for three years. He's, he's seen all kind of cool stuff. Um, and, and, and they walked everywhere. And so, yes, he's tired. But I, I, I wonder if Peter wasn't depressed. I wonder if Peter wasn't having a little self-pity. You know, he left everything, right, to follow Jesus. He left his boats. He's been walking with this dude for three years. Jesus, you know, a little, a little while back, I'm not exactly sure, Jesus says, hey, listen, you need to get behind me, devil, because you're not mindful of the things of God. And then, and then, and then right before this, he tells Peter, hey, listen, you're going to deny me three times. You're not going to die for me. You're going to deny me three times. Peter was jacked up. No wonder he took a nap. He was caught up in his busyness, even, even his busyness of sleeping, even, even his busyness of putting that thing off. And, 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 it's, and, and how many times do we do that? Here, here we are, we're, we, 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 we house the very presence of God. We house the very presence of God. We, we have absolutely nothing stopping us from, from having and being and dwelling in the presence of the Lord. I, I don't know about you, but I get caught up in busyness. I, I, I know earlier this week I was working, at the end of last week and, 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 and the beginning of this week, I was working on my car, and I was consumed by it. Um, con no, seriously, I was consumed by it. Like it was all I, I listen, I had, a, I, had, I had stuff that needed to be done. I know what needed to be done. I just needed the time to execute it. And, 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 and I didn't. And, and, and I'm like, I got to work on this sermon. And I'm like, well, and I remember I told myself, I was like, well, Lord, uh, I got to do this before I can do that. Otherwise, I won't be able to work on this. Sermon. <laughs> and and I, I had to repent. I, I, had, to re I had to repent um, because it's so easy to get caught up in business. And, and so any, any, anybody, ever, anybody ever be like that? Anybody ever, anybody ever, go, to, go, anybody ever go to spend time with the Lord? And you're like, listen, Lord, I'm going to give you a half hour. And you're and you're on your knees and you're and you're with the Lord and you're and you're and you're and you're five minutes into this thing and you're pouring your heart out and then and then and then you're and then and then you're 15 minutes into this thing and the last 10 minutes you've been over here with Aunt Edna and 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 talking about what you're going to do on Tuesday and and Jesus is the furthest thing from you. So it's okay, just just get back in His presence. Uh, but I but we. We see this. We, we, we see Jesus just moments, right? Just moments and, 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 and hours before he was carried off to stand trial and go to the cross, giving us, giving his disciples a picture of what it looked like to stop and get away and go have presence with the Father. And, um, you know, God... He wants to renew presence in our lives. And, and, you know, renewing is not refreshing. Renewing is exchanging the old for the new. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed. New things have come. God is a creator of new things. That's why he wants us to trust him and lean on him with our heart and not our understanding. Because it puts him in a position to create new things in our life. 
that we didn't see, that only he can see. And then the next thing you know, we're experiencing the presence of God in a way that we've never experienced before. And, 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 our, and our trust level in the Lord just goes up. And so I, I, I think, that, I think that, that God wants his presence to rest on us. And, and we have to put ourselves in a position to allow God's presence to rest on us. Because he actually wants to move. And I believe that God wants, to, I, I believe that God wants his presence to rest and move in unison. He wants to rest on you so that you can move with him. Because he wants you to do the things that he is doing. He wants you to join you in the, he wants you to join him in the things that he is doing. But it's easy to get caught up and take a nap sometimes. And, and so, listen, you, you, listen, we may very well have a room in heaven after we die. I, 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 don't, I hope so. But I don't believe that that's what Jesus was talking about in, in, in the beginning of, of John 14. He is literally talking about going to prepare a place for you. He, he is going to go and pay the sin debt. He is going to go and pay the atonement that has to be paid. And then he is going to be raised from the dead. And he is going to come back. And he is going to ascend to the Father. And he is going to send the Holy Spirit. So that we can dwell in the same place together. In my Father's house are many mansions, and I'm here to tell you that you're a mansion. God wants to dress you up. You know, not in a weird way. I know it's, I know it's, I know it's, I know it's the month of June, but not, okay. So. God, I, we, we desire for you to rest on us. God, we, we, we desire for you to rest on us. Father, Father as, a, as, a, as a people that belong to you, God, we, we want to see you. We want a pure heart before you, God. We want to cooperate with you. Even when we don't, Lord. You, you are so faithful, Holy Spirit. You, your presence is so good. That even when, even, even when, our, when, when, when the spirit is willing and the flesh is weak, you are, you are knocking on the door of our hearts. Calling us in, 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 into, into a place a presence with you and a place of repentance with you. Lord Jesus, I thank you for what you did. Lord, I, I, I thank you that you, you, you came and, 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 and you made me born again. And Lord, that you are, you are teaching us to think born again. And so, Father, I just, I just thank you for this. And I, 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 I really kind of felt this at the beginning of the service, but, but we're going to do it now just as a body. James, that's cool. You can, you can leave that on, but if you'll just turn it down just a little bit. I, I, I want to sing as a, as a body came to my rescue. We, we, we did it tonight. And so, um, I, I don't know, if, James, if you want to put the words up there, but I just, I just feel like we need to just sing that and just, and just be in his presence. And, and we need to take it with us. Not as, as, a, as a church house and as, as a, as a, as a, as a body of believers, we, we, we house the presence of God and we need to take that with us everywhere that we go. And I know that we do. Uh, I, I know that we do because every week you guys come back with testimony uh, of, of how the Lord has worked and moved in, in, in your lives as individuals and the lives of people around you. And, and we, have, we have awesome things to testify about God's goodness. And so I know that we're taking um, his presence with us, but we need to continue to steward that. We, we, we need to continue to steward that more and more because, because we come into this place, into this assembly to stir each other up in love and in good works. 
and 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 and, and we should not be leaving here the same way that we came in. I don't I don't know it I don't I don't know it by heart, but in in Ezekiel forty six. Um, I think it's I think it's verse nine. He talks about the people coming in the north gate and going out the south gate, and going out the south gate and going in the north gate when they came into worship. And it's because you shouldn't be coming into a place of worship and leaving out the same way you came in. And we should be we should be taking the presence of God everywhere that we go. Every. every this, well, that's just crazy, Nick. You know, it's not crazy. Every conversation that we have with every stranger, the presence of God is, is right there with us. We, we are carriers of the kingdom. And, and, and listen, I, 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 know that it's, I know that it's difficult to talk to everybody, but, but, but you know what? We, we live in a crazy world right now, and they need Christ. Listen, the United States needs Christ, and, I, and listen, I'm not bashing our country. And, and listen, I know that I know that you know we kind of live in the comfort zone over here, but I think that there's a lot of circles right here in the United States that are on fire for God. I do. I believe that. I believe that there is a faith rising up in this country. I, I do. I believe that. I believe that there are some real men and real women who are submitted to the Holy Spirit. And, and, and they cannot, they will not compromise. Compromise is not an option for them. And I think that that is rising up in our country. But we, we have some crazy times going on. And, these, and, and, and we need Jesus more than ever. It's not that we didn't need Jesus any more today than we, than we needed him yesterday. But we need Jesus more than ever, every day, every single day. And so we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna sing that. We're going to sing that. I think, uh, so, uh, I don't know, are the words not up there? Can we get those? <laughs>